On June 8, 1970, the Member Services and Hospital Committee of the Group Health Cooperative convened at the Central Clinic on Seattle's Capitol Hill. On the meeting's agenda that day was a call to review the early stages of Group Health's collaboration with MedEx, the University of Washington's newly created Physician Assistant Training Program. Archived minutes from that meeting, written and submitted by Recording Secretary Isabel K. Stanley, reveal an earnest, if sometimes pointed, discussion among this committee of doctors, nurses, staff, and board members, including Dr. Robert Monroe, Dr. Robert Sherry, Dr. Robert Stever, and renowned board president and tireless group health advocate, Mrs. Hilde Birnbaum. Just how were things going with this newly forged partnership and ultimately with the creation of a new healthcare professional, the physician assistant? Isabel Stanley's meticulous minutes offer up some clues. Dr. Monroe thought few people would disagree. She writes that there is a physician shortage in this country. The, the idea, idea of, of using, using ex-military medical corpsmen has always been around, but the question has been how to use them. Can people with skills but no academic credentials contribute to the delivery of medical care? For Dr. Richard Smith and his colleagues at the University of Washington School of Medicine, the answer to this essential question was most certainly yes. And the MedEx training program was on the road to proving it. In a nutshell, the idea was this. The incoming students were to be given three months of training at the university not to provide them with extensive medical knowledge, but rather to orient them to civilian life and round out their experiences as needed. At the end of those three months, each student was then to be assigned to work for one year with a general practitioner located in clinics and hospitals throughout the region. From there, upon graduation, the physician assistant would join the ranks of healthcare professionals where they were most sorely needed. Smith shared his innovative idea with Dr. Monroe who was chief of the general practitioners at the Central Clinic and a friend of Smith's from their days in the Peace Corps. One of the things Peace Corps people did when they came back as returning Peace Corps volunteers was to continue to use those same kind of ideas. And so Dick figured out where the power structure was, how to make it work, but he thought this model won't entirely work unless it also has an urban point of view. And he thought that group health because was a perfect place, partly because he knew Bob Monroe but also because group health really prided itself and still does on innovation, new ways of doing things. If the use of MedEx is to be a new approach, group health, which has always been an innovative group, although getting more and more orthodox the bigger we get, ought to be in on this new approach to providing medical care. Three members of class one, each of them a former special forces combat medic, were assigned to three group health preceptors. Michael Carraher was assigned to work with Dr. Sherry, Tom Coles was matched with Dr. Monroe, and Stephen Turnipseed's preceptor was to be Dr. Stever. At the beginning of the MedEx program, no one knew for sure how the MedEx would work. It was a program to see how they would fit in. And so, six months in, on a warm June day on Capitol Hill, just how had these pioneering students been fitting in? We just formed a collaborative and we really worked it out. And it, it made so much difference, you know, and it actually gave me more incentive, me and Tom and, and uh, Mike, to make our mark, make our mark. And we did that, we did that. Steve is a very compatible person to be, to be around. Fast learner, the faster he learned, the more he applied it to a patient, and the patients felt pleased. We had a time motion study done on us in, within a year of our being there, and our efficiency and proficiency was greater than that of any physicians in there. It was, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, we thrived on it.
Mrs. Birnbaum said this subject had been placed on the agenda because of some complaints reported. Dr. Newman advised that a total of six complaints had been received to date on the MedEx program. Mrs. Birnbaum said the complaint she had referenced to was one where the patient came in three times and had been seen by the MedEx each time. The patient felt he was paying good money to see a doctor and not a MedEx. Dr. Monroe said it sounded to him like a communication problem. If a patient wants to see the physician, he sees the physician. Mrs. Birnbaum says this places a new responsibility on the patient. Does he want to reject the MedEx and ask to see the doctor? Dr. Monroe said the goal. When I get a chance to health. look at the minutes from group health meetings in the early 1970s, you have people involved like Dr. Bob Monroe and Hilda Birnbaum and others. You see them engaged in these lively, well-informed debates. Mrs. Birnbaum says the inability to have patients relate to a doctor at group health is a very touchy situation. Dr. Monroe said the patient accepts a lot of what the physician says because he knows the physician. He thought the same will hold true with the medics. I remember Dr. Monroe, he was a relatively quiet, thoughtful man who had remarkable impact and influence over the people around him. It was a very important time to make this work. Dr. Monroe and I were deeply involved in the program at Group Health. Dr. Sherry was across the pond in the Bellevue, and uh, was involved, but sort of in a more distant way. As usual, he was just a very quiet guy. No, nobody would ever guess what he, how he found out, but he found out, got me involved, and we went, went for it. He commanded the respect and the attention of people through his conviction, his values, uh, and not necessarily through the amount of noise that he made. Bob Monroe is a major influence. He was everywhere all the time. Hilda Birnbaum was one of my bosses, uh, and uh, she made a lot of noise. <laughs> Mrs. Birnbaum considered we are discriminating against the female of the species. She was really clear about her expectations. She thought we were missing a lot of skills by going to the outside and getting men because they are men. She was not shy at all about making it clear to me what they were. Mrs. Birnbaum was concerned about the salary levels as compared to training levels. But she was right. She was so visionary and the contribution that she made to the quality of our work and our great results was, was huge. Mrs. Birnbaum said the program should be set up so that it is right and most acceptable. We have many ways we could go. With Hildy and Bob Monroe and others, they were really in heated debate about whether we had the right balance of women to men and whether we were really appropriately balancing the role of nurses and physicians and, and the medic staff. We are dealing with a dilemma. You want to give medical care to all, yet the person who wants medical care wants the best he can get. I love too the fact that they were holding themselves accountable for making decisions that were based on their best judgment of what would be in the best interest of the patients who we are responsible for. If they were fee-for-service doctors, they would either be greedy and make a lot of money or refuse to see the patients. They cannot do this in group health. Someone has to see these patients, and if they don't see them, no one does. In the end, through the debate, they reached a reconciliation, and they agreed on a path forward. Motion by Mrs. Birnbaum that this committee recommend to the Board of Group Health that management be authorized to work out with the medical staff a valid program of utilization of medics which have been trained during the past year. Seconded by Mr. Friedman, motion carried unanimously. Only a few months after this meeting, the fall issue of Group Health's newsletter declared the MedEx program, and perhaps more to the point, Group Health's part in helping create a new healthcare profession, a success story. At the same time, national news stories featuring the rise of MedEx and the PA profession began circulating through both national print media and television network newscasts. Here, the armed forces discharged 6,000 medics and Navy medical corpsmen. There's a serious shortage of doctors in many parts of the country. Group Health was in the middle of experiencing a significant growth spurt. We were adding clinics and there was a physician shortage.
There was a lot of ferment. There was a lot of energy and excitement about change. The civil rights movement, women's rights, gender issues, the Vietnam War. People were trying to figure out a better way of doing things. In healthcare, we were trying to figure out a better way of delivering care to people. I think it's in that context that people were open to new ideas. And I think it's not an accident that Dr. Monroe and Dr. Newman and Dr. Stever and others were excited by the opportunity of working with this new group of, of clinicians. In the 46 years since the successful launch of a new idea, MedEx has grown to become a national leader in PA education while holding to its mission of reaching the underserved wherever and however they live. And the Group Health Cooperative has expanded its capacity and extended its reach into many communities throughout the Pacific Northwest, while maintaining its nationally recognized standing as a driving force for innovative, affordable, high-quality health care. Medic's history without group health would be a lot less interesting. would have delayed our growth big time and I think we would have looked very different and I think we might have been seen as more specialty based and less altruistic. We wouldn't have this strong urban presence that we have. I also think that PAs wouldn't have grown as much. For example, that PAs were both in the primary care practice and then showed up in the emergency room. They really promoted them and made them highly visible. They were well utilized in group health. Ruth Bowig's points about how group health has influenced the evolution of not just the medics program, but the role that PAs play. I'm flattered that she would say that about group health. And I think it is appropriate to say group health has changed because of the role physician's assistants have played within our organization. Oh, unquestionably we would not be the same. We're much stronger. It's been so successful. It's been affirming. And it has helped reinforce over the course of time that not only is group health good for advancing these new contributions that PAs can make, but the PAs themselves help now to define what it is that makes group health so valuable to our patients. We're a different organization, I believe, because physician assistants in particular, but nurse practitioners and other providers are part of our medical group. They're part of our delivery system and they've enriched our organization, you know, immensely.